Welcome back, everybody, to the 50-day property challenge brought to you by the EDPF Property Academy and Private Property. Once again, we welcome our friends Jared Ricketts and Matt Al. Unfortunately, Matt Al um, is not uh, here yet, but she will join us shortly. Um, and when she joins us, we will also talk to her about what she's done in week number four. So this is now day 20 of our challenge. We are at the end of week number four, and uh, we just wanted today uh, to catch up with both Jared and Matt Al to see how they are doing in uh, their journey, because this week and a bit of last week was about learning about property investment fundamentals, um, learning about property management, uh, learning about how to find good deals, um, and a whole range of other things that they've learned about. But at the end of the day, these last two weeks has been about them going to look for property opportunities for their uh, property investment portfolio. So today, um, right now, we've got Jared uh, in the room with us, and I'd like to just ask him a couple of questions about um, where he's at in his journey. Uh, so sit back, relax, and enjoy uh, this discussion that we have with Jared and Matt Al. All right, so Jared, um, welcome back to the 50-day challenge uh, wrap-up for week four. Um, Jared, tell us about uh, this week. How's it been going? Tell us about, I know you, you've been looking at some properties. Um, tell mm -hmm. us about those properties a little bit. Tell us about the journey you've had this week. So it's been an interesting week. I mean, for me, I really had to zone in on making some kind of decision. Although, you know, there's so many properties out there and you, you get so confused sometimes because, um, oh, you could do this or you could do that. Or, uh, but I really had to take some time to understand what it is that I want and how I um, want to see my property portfolio develop. And I decided that because we are in quite a, a popular holiday uh, city, you know, Cape Town, I, I went for a holiday accommodation. So um, I sort of tossed the other option aside, and this is what I'm going to zone into. Um, and I'm really excited because it's in an area that I really uh, aspire to, to get a property in. It's in Franschhoek, and uh, it's, it's a three-bedroom, and uh, it's, it's quite ideal for, for that kind of uh, usage. And so um, I'm chatting to the agent. Um, it's a different kind of buy altogether because it's, it's part of, a, um, I'm not even sure what the term is, but it's a close or its own little estate. And so um, the great thing, what I enjoy about it, it comes with its own um, uh, cleaning uh, staff, if you could call it that. Uh, it comes with its own maintenance team. Um, of course, there's a levy. And I think for me and the lifestyle that I lead, it made a lot of sense because I don't always have time to attend to, to those things, you know? And mm. so um, it seems like the right fit for me and where I'm at right now. Um, so, so I'm quite excited to see. So guys, um, yeah, we're busy chatting with Jared here about his journey. And uh, um, thank you, Jared, so far for what you've uh, discussed with us and uh, the catch up that we're doing. But I see Matt Al has joined us. So I just would like to welcome yeah. Matt Al um, to our wrap up for week four. Welcome Matt Al to uh, week four wrap up. I'm hoping that you had Hi. a Hi. Um, I know you've been extremely busy at the SABC doing recordings and stuff, um, but uh, we, will, we will catch up with you right now as soon as we are done uh, discussing with Jared. But uh, do you want to maybe just say hello to the audience? Hi everyone, sorry I'm late, but rather late than never, glad to be here. <laughs> with your brandy braids. Yes, yes. Yeah. with the, you know, <laughs> we're from work. <laughs> yeah, got a job, getting paid. Yeah, getting paid for the change. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. All right, cool, man, guys. Okay, so Janet, we're talking about your property investment opportunities that you've identified. So you've gone through quite a number of opportunities, but you've decided mm -hmm. to focus on a particular area, and that being sort of the Airbnb kind of uh, scenario, where um, mm -hmm. because we are in a tourist city being Cape Town, um, you've chosen uh, the Franschhoek, general Franschhoek area, uh, because a lot of people enjoy going there. There's the wine route and all of that sort of thing. So um, this property that you've identified, how far are you now in the journey in terms of finalizing the deal? Um, why is it that you chose this particular property? Uh, tell us a little bit about the property itself, how many bedrooms, 
Um, and what is it that you want you want to do with the particular property? Sure. So uh, the property, uh, we am, am in the process, but I'm chatting to the agent and um, viewed it. I'm going to go and view it again. Uh, but uh, we are back and forth with just discussing a few things on the property. You know, the footsteps thing did pop up. <laughs> so I had to just make sure that what I'm getting is what was advertised. And um, the why I chose this property, as you just mentioned, all the amenities, it's about taking full advantage of the wine route in Cape Town and uh, not just uh, foreigners, but even the locals within Cape Town love to spend a weekend there. So, so that's why I decided this is a better option for me. And um, I'm, I'm going to be uh, just assessing the structure, uh, making sure that everything is good. Um, it's a three bedroom, it's a brick home. Um, it's, it's got a garden, it's got a... Uh, like, as I've mentioned before, it's got uh, the cleaning staff, it's got uh, security, it's got uh, maintenance staff. And so for the lifestyle that I lead, as mentioned, uh, my wife and I, you know, it's, it's quite suitable for us because we don't really have to have our hands on every single thing. You know, we also have an agent that uh, is stationed within Township who will also be renting it out for us and making sure that that, uh, you know, that, that side of the bookings is handled because I can't mm -hmm. imagine me having to go back and forth with emails and this is wrong and that is wrong. No, that's not me. I'm, I'm doing other things. <laughs> and so I need, yeah. I need someone who can do them. So it really suits, I think it suits where I'm at, but also I, I think it's really going to define the kind of portfolio that I develop from here on out. Mm. So it almost sounds, it sounds like you've made a decision. This is, it looks like this is the property you're going to go for. Yes, and I'm crossing my fingers. It's 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 a scary thing, Lanzo, because yes, it's happening, and um, everything that we've discussed is now coming to the fore. But um, I've made my notes. I had my little notebook with me, and um, I'm asking questions left, right, and center. This okay. property is on a farm, and so um, it does come with its own sort of individual set of uh, 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 what's the word? Uh, it's slipping my mind, but. Uh, Legalities and 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 its own processes of how you you purchase the property. Mm. And, uh, so I'm learning. I'm learning, but right now it's making a lot of sense. Yeah. So one of the other things that we spoke about over the last couple of days is financing. Um, and yes. we've had many discussions, you and I, about how your income isn't really set because you are an artist and your income only comes when you actually perform. When, and when you're Correct. not performing, there's no income. So with, with that, obviously, it's difficult to show the bank that you have a consistent income in order for them to give you a bond. Uh -huh. So tell us a little bit about how you're overcoming that problem and, uh, and whether our discussions about other people's money has helped you at all. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so so um, fortunately for me, outside of music, I do have a couple of other businesses. And so there is an income coming in there but um, the income uh, sort of amount fluctuates. So there's not one set amount that I make. Sometimes I make double, triple, you know, um, sometimes I'm, it's just the one business operating depending on the season and the need. Um, fortunately uh, for me, uh, you know, my wife and I invest together quite often. And so she's tapping into her savings as well. And uh, we're also going to be chatting to a few uh, friends as well, if need be, but uh, between the two of us, we, we are looking at how we can, um, Tap into other spaces as well. So, so um, I'm I'm kind of quite confident that that we'll be able to do this. That's awesome. Listen, I I genuinely I'm holding thumbs for you because uh, thank you I'm so really much. Excited about this journey so far. I mean, only 20 days in, and you've already decided on the property that you want to buy. And in fact, as as much as I can remember from last week's discussion, you actually have a second opportunity that maybe if we finalize this one. We can possibly even do a second one before the end of the 50 days. Is that Who knows? Listen, oh, <laughs> listen, I'm just <laughs> trying to pace myself. But um, if the opportunity arises, definitely, as we've mentioned throughout this course, I think it's important that, that we as young South Africans um, are able to tap into this market and really capitalize while we can. And while the market looks the way that it does, um, we are recovering from the pandemic. And so it, uh, as much as prices are going up, it's quite slow. So um, now's the time, definitely. I agree with you fully. I mean, the fact that 
Um, we, we sort of nearing the end of the pandemic. They sort of have this thing under control now. Prices are slowly starting to increase. And you don't mm -hmm. want to get to a point where um, once the prices are at its peak again, you then want to jump in because now the prices are good. I want a piece of the pie. By that time, it's too late. So I think now yes. is the ideal time. Just like you said, now is the ideal time for anybody who wants to get into the property space because the market is on the up. So I think if anybody is out there listening to us and wants to, wanted to or have been wanting to or wants to in the future invest in property, I would say now is the time uh, because we are on the up in terms of the pricing and you don't want to get uh, to it when it's too late. So Jared, thank you very much for, you, for that um, uh, little bit Absolutely. of uh, update on where you are at. We are very, at the EDPF, uh, we are very excited for you and the fact that you are this close to finalizing your very first deal. Um, and with your own money and other people's money, um, I'm sure that based on the discussions we've had so far, you will be able to get this deal over the line before these 50 days are over. So Hey, listen. But, um, yeah, thank you. Um, I just want to also add, you know, what, what the public also has to, to understand is that, um, you know, I am married and so um, I have the, I would say unfortunately, my wife and I both work and so we do have dual income that can help unlock opportunities as well. And so I think, you know, not for anybody else to get disheartened, you know, this is something we can all do. Um, it's just, it's just a matter of looking at what you can afford, you know, what, if you're just by yourself and you need to purchase something. And it doesn't have to be a grand property. It doesn't have to be a holiday accommodation. So start with an apartment that costs you 300,000 rand, you know, if you can afford that. And, and that's how you start. You know, we all have different starting blocks. And so I don't think it's about comparing who's getting what. It's not about looking at other people and saying, hey, I'm not there yet. Um, you're on your own journey and you're defining your own property journey. And so you have the luxury of deciding um, how you wanted to start, you know, the way it looks now in a couple of years, it's going to change. You know, your investments are going to work for you and you can unlock bigger and better opportunities. So I just wanted to share that with everyone as well. Some sage advice there from uh, a novice in the property space. So uh, the time that we spent together clearly has paid off. And I'm very glad that you've learned all these things in this very, very short space of time. But having spoken about uh, starting out um, on a low base and not wanting to reach for the stars immediately. Let's, let's jump over to you, Matt Al, because that's basically what you've done. You have not uh, reached for the stars and bought a 10 million rand property. Um, not that you could afford it, um, but you decided to go in at a low base so that you can, number one, uh, spread your risk, um, have a diversified portfolio, um, and be able to grow much quicker because you are looking at a lower lower end of the market rather than the very mm. high end of the market. So your two properties, you've told us already um, a little bit about your two properties that you already own. Uh, tell us now how you are um, uh, faring in terms of your journey to get your third property. Tell us uh, what you're looking at at the moment and, um, and how far you are with deciding which property you want to buy. Cool. Thanks so much, Nigel. Um, I think I'm really just trying to build off the base that I already have. So as you know, the previous two properties, I think the, the one, the first one I got for 440, um, but at a market value of 600. So that was a really good deal that I got. And then the second one, um, it was a 1.5 bedroom that I got for 360 in Arcadia. Um, which because of the square meterage in the space, we managed to renovate and actually squeeze in another bedroom and still have space for a lounge area for people to be able to relax and chill. So I'm really just going off the, pretty much the same formula, uh, shooting low again. Uh, my price range in this case is 300 oh. if I'm lucky, but I'm really looking between 350 and 400 maximum. Um, I have spotted quite a few because in that range, I do get a lot of two bedrooms that pop up in the area of Arcadia and Sunnyside, but I'm specifically looking more towards Arcadia um, for this one. So there's a lot of 1.5, two bedroom. I think really what's driving my decision this time is again, 
the square meters of the property. Um, anything above 80 square meters is really good. Um, potentially, there was one that I also saw at, um, I think it was 102 square meters. So that's, that's pretty massive um, for a two-bedroom apartment, which again, um, there was one that I saw, it's already been renovated to maximize, because that lounge space sometimes is, is so big that you could actually renovate it to fit another, you know, single bedroom, a uh, single bedded bedroom, um, and obviously still having good closet space and the study area desk where you can actually do your work. Um, and again, still allocating space for, you know, leisure where there's a TV for people to be able to relax and do whatever they do. So I have, unlike um, Jared, who's already found his place, I'm, I'm still, I've, I've probably got a top eight right now. And I think it comes off the history where either in cases where I go view, sometimes I get beat by a cash buyer. So I need to have other options. And also because of the pictures online, they're not, they're not always as good as it seems. So I've only managed to see two of the eight so far. So for the rest of this week, um, that's what I'm planning to do because I'll actually be around Hatfield and Pretoria tomorrow. So I will squeeze in hopefully another three because agents also get busy. And then hopefully over the weekend, I can view the others. But I'm literally on a top eight. All of them are ranging between... 345 and the most I had was 420 but all with similar characteristics either a 1.5 or two bedroom with square meters of about 80 so that like you said being cash flow positive from the get-go because also with the levies on those properties it's not too bad I'm looking at about between 1.4 and 1.8 max and then obviously still accounting for the bond repayment that I'd have to make of about you know, 4,000 or more, you know, obviously looking at the interest rate as well, that's just gone up. Um, but so far, all of them in terms of just being a two bedroom or a 2.5 bedroom are already cash flow positive. Um, yeah, the rental income that's currently coming in is either square with the levies and bond or just the, there's actually a little bit extra that's left over. And the other thing I'm looking for is a prepaid apartment. Um, I learned that was a learning from my first place. It wasn't prepaid and you get the bill at the end of the month and you think what's going on. So I ended up putting a prepaid meter in there. So yeah, now it's prepaid. So even with these, I'm looking for pre, uh, prepaid apartments. Yeah. So that they can handle and sort out, um, yeah the electricity bill amongst themselves as they go. Um, and then I really do have a company that has been managing the other two. So I'm looking at potentially just slipping it under their management as well, because we've had a really good relationship in the past three, four years. So that's where I'm at. Um, yeah, there's, it's like there's so many properties in Pretoria. Um, it's just, of course, finding the one that will suit my needs currently. And like I said, I'm not doing this if it's not cash flow positive from the get go. So yeah, I just have to go view as many more as I can. Yeah, so clearly you've learned a lot in terms of the whole discussion <laughs> on cash flow positivity and, yeah, and yeah. not allowing your tenants to, uh, to do things that's going to put you into a pickle, like, for example, yeah. uh, having massive parties and using the electricity um, mm. to an extent that you, you don't know which way to turn because your electricity bill is more than the income that you're getting. So, so yes. that was a very wise decision that you've made there in terms of the prepaid meters. And I would suggest that for anybody, um, you know, if you if it's possible, uh, in some cases, some municipalities do allow where you even put a prepaid meter for the water. Um, you know, so um, very few municipalities allow that. But if you can, I would even suggest that because water is something that can get out of control very quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember um, a house that that we owned um, not so long ago. We had just taken transfer of the property. Um, and it's in, in fact, it was a house that we lived in. Um, and we moved into the property. And the first water um, and rates and taxes and all the other bills, municipal bills we received was 125,000 rand in four months. <laughs> and I nearly died. I was like, what is this? And we, we looked at it and it was the water bill. And what had happened was 
um, there was a leak underneath uh, the water, uh, and nobody knew about it. And the water was just seeping away down into the ground. Oh, um, and then by the time I got my bow, for the first time after four months, the bow was 125,000 rand. So these things, you need to be very careful in terms of how you manage these things and make sure mm -hmm. that, uh, that you keep a handle on it. And the property management company is a very good way to do that because they know what to look for. Mm -hmm. So I'm very glad that both of you have decided because of your busy schedules to rather go with a property management company to look after your property for you because it is so difficult even for somebody who isn't busy to look after a property if you don't know what you're doing. Now mm -hmm. you guys are extremely busy. It's even worse because all of a sudden um, things are happening at your property and you don't know about it. The water is leaking. Your tenant's not telling you because he doesn't care or she doesn't care. Um, that they've got water, so it doesn't matter to them. And you're paying the bill, so <laughs> they don't care. So it's good to have these management controls in place. And I'm very glad that from a property management perspective, and uh, this week we, we learned from David Beatty how to manage our properties properly. Um, and and we, I'm very glad that David came to speak um, to you guys about how to manage your property. Because you guys have made that decision and said, you know what, this is too much PT for me. <laughs> too much hard grafting. I'd much rather have my passive income and let a property manager look after it for me because there's just so mm -hmm. much work to be done. If you have the time, obviously, you'd want to get your hands dirty so that you can save that uh, maybe 6, 7, even sometimes 10% property management fee. But uh, I think personally, I don't look after my own property because it's not worth it for the effort and the time. I'd much rather pay a property manager myself. So, Matt Al, I'm very glad that you've been able to now um, reduce your uh, uh, number of properties that you're looking at because I know you saw a lot of properties. Yeah. I've uh, been able to reduce that, that just down to eight. I'm very glad for you. Um, and hopefully in the next week or two, you'll be able to narrow that down to one or two mm -hmm. and then make a final decision. And then once that is done, let me ask you this question uh, off the cuff because uh, we never um, spoke about this beforehand. Um, I know I spoke about it with Jared because um, he wanted to know about, you know, funding the deal and so on. Um, how are you going to fund, once you make a decision, you, let's say you found a property at 350,000 rand, you've already got two properties. What is your decision in terms of how you're going to fund that property? Nigel, I'm really hoping that you're going to teach me how to secure this property with other people's money. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> but um, I think for one, um, obviously, I, I'm very like I'm fortunate in this case to already have a record of rental income coming in from the other two properties. So one, that is motivation to the bank that I already have two investment properties. Um, but like Jared said, we we work in a space where you know November you are getting like millions, and then December. Okay, let's say it's December. You make millions, and then Jan, like. The clubs ain't hiring. Hello, like, what's going on? <laughs> you know, so now you're living off December's income in Jan. <laughs> you're starting again. So it's 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 my bank statement in terms of my company income. Like it's it's it fluctuates, you know. Um, but I think the fact that I do have that steady um, rental income that comes in every month to already show the bank that listen. Um, rental income is coming in. So it's not going to be like an additional bond because those two properties already are fund funding themselves. But I think for people who genuinely have never started, um, have, have don't even know where to start, they don't even have savings, for example, I think that's where we are going to figure out how to use other people's money for this. Awesome. And there's no need to figure anything out because in actual fact, um, we've already spoken a little bit about that particular uh, matter. And uh, if you remember a couple of days ago, mm -hmm. maybe a week or two, Miguel came and spoke about their, um, and not to give any free advertising to any bank, but uh, APSA have this very unique uh, concept called future rental income uh, product. And you've now already purchased your property. So you, in fact, qualify for that particular um, product where after two properties, they will no longer only take into account your income, 
but they will actually look at the property that you want to buy and see what the future projected income is from that property and then be able to give you a loan based on the income, the future projected income oh, wow. of that property. So you're in a fortunate position now where after two properties, okay. you can actually qualify for that product, which is phenomenal. So not only your own income, plus the income of your two existing properties, also the income of the potential income of the third property, you'll be able to qualify. Okay. But you and I will have a, a long conversation about that and cool. make sure that once you've made your decision, you, Miguel, Adi, and I will sit down and we'll work a plan to make sure that before this 50-day challenge is over, that you get qualified for that particular product so that you can get your funding without any hesitation from the bank. All right. Does that sound good? Nice. Sounds great. <laughs> okay, guys. Uh, that's all the time we have for uh, week four. So, unfortunately, um, this conversation has been stimulating to me. I'm really enjoying <laughs> this 50-day uh, uh, challenge and the fact that now in day 20, we are so very, very close to both of you being able to achieve the goal that you set for yourself at the beginning. So we are excited. I know you guys are excited and, uh, and I really want to thank you for being part of this journey. Thank you for joining the EDPF Property Academy and private property in this 50-day property challenge. And to you guys out there who are watching us on a regular basis, don't forget to subscribe to the EDPF uh, um, um, YouTube channel and also to check out our website edpfpropertyacademy.com so that you can follow this journey where we post every day, we post for the 50 day challenge what we have done on that particular day. So this session on a Friday night at half past eight, this session is really just a wrap up. If you really wanna understand and know every single part of what we are trying to do, go to our website and watch every video for each day and follow this methodology, and hopefully you too can become a property investor. For now, this is Nigel, Matt, Al, and Jared saying goodbye, and thank you from EDPF Property Academy and Private Property. See you next week.